Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Exodus chapter 5 verse 19, Lamentations chapter 3 verse 11, and Luke chapter 17 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Heavenly Father for this life with you, Lord God. We would have it no other way. We are Thankful, thankful, thankful for the salvation that you have given us through your son. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Exodus chapter 5, verse 19. The foreman of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, you shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily task each day. All right. And so, you know, being a slave making bricks could not have been easy. Right. And and God, you know, knew the struggle of the children of Israel. That's why he was sending deliverance. He saw that they were struggling. He saw that they were slaves. He saw that they were crying out to him. Actually, um, uh, Exodus chapter six talks more about that. And, you know, he saw the difficulties that they were undergoing and he was coming to save them. He was coming to redeem them. He was coming to save them from their troubles. But before he came to save them from their troubles, it had to get a little worse, right? You know, when Moses came inquiring about the children of Israel and asking if they could come out into the wilderness to worship God, um, you know, it, it made things worse, right? Taking that stand, even asking the question, even bringing up anything that looked like it might be deliverant, um, begin to stir up the evil, right? Begin to stir up the forces of darkness and cause them to relinquish any loose or, or, or anything that they would think might be helping them or causing them to be what they were calling idol, right? And so, you know, um, when Moses came, it looked much worse, right? It, it looked like he brought trouble on them. Because remember, when the foreman came out from talking to the Pharaoh, he he was, they basically cursed Moses saying, you know, basically God is going to be your judge for what you've done, um, causing us to stink in the eyes of the Pharaoh, right? And so, um, you know, when they were slaves, they knew the sensitivity of having to have favor with the master. Master, right. And so, but God was making a transition, right? He was causing them to, um, instead of seeking out a worldly master to have favor with, they were now going to be seeking the favor of a true and living God, right? The only living God, the only true God, right? And so now they were going to go and worship their own God, the truth right? Not, not lies, not things that people made. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't going to be just to walk out and begin serving God. It was, it was actually, you know, actually having to do something, go through something, right? And so here the children of Israel were struggling. They were um, having to deal with this Pharaoh spirit, right? This this angry spirit, this intimidating spirit, right? And and you know, in our lives, when we come out of sin, when we come out of darkness, it can be hard, right? And and the things that you used to once do might call to you in the beginning, but you know, you get through it, right? You get through it, and you realize that your tastes are changing, the things that you desire are changing. God is transforming you by the renewing of your mind, and you want something different. Right. And so, you know, God is letting us know here that, you know, hard times might be ahead. Right. Troubles might be ahead, um, but his deliverance is coming. He is coming soon. We have a redeemer and, and the enemy knows this. 
So he's going to make it harder on the people, right, before Christ returns. He, when he sees the prophecies being fulfilled, when he sees things, you know, getting darker and more evil towards his kingdom and, and it's the, those forces are at work, right? He's going to try his best to discourage the believer um, into wanting to please the masters of this world rather than please their God, right? And so the people needed straw, right? They needed this buffer agent. They needed this this thing that, you know, even though it was weak, it, it was used to to buffer the bricks, right? To, to as a binding agent. I don't know if you guys have ever seen anybody make like cement countertops or certain types of cement. Um, and you don't want the cement to crack, right? You don't want it to break over time especially if you're not using any heat to harden it. And so um, for them, they, they weren't um, most likely they weren't breaking, baking these bricks, but like they needed something inside of it, some sort of fibrous agent to be able to cause the hardening in, of the break for it not to be able to break as easy for it not to be able to shrink as easy. Right. And so that's what straw did. Straw was that buffering agent. Straw was that thing inside the fibers, inside of the brick in order to make the brick hard, right? And so they weren't able to get that hardening agent anymore. So they were going to have to search it out. Now, you know, making bricks in itself is hard, right? The, the actual making of the brick, that's the labor. So if you're saying to them, hey, on top of your labor, like the hard work, I want you to also go run and, and find straw and spend most of your day gathering straw so that you can even begin the process. Wow, right? You're tired before you even get to work, right? You're you're already done. You're already exhausted, right? And so that's the type of thing that the Lord is showing us is going to be in the atmosphere before the deliverance comes, right? Just before the deliverance comes, hardness can sometimes be, be the, on the agenda, you know, things aren't as status quo, right? Things aren't as usual, the things that we used to rely on, the things that we used to depend on to be there for us may not be there for us, right? The, the normal stability of our daily lives is going to be changed, right? And so we need to trust in God during these times that he's going to make a way, right? And, and he is, he is going to come and redeem us. He is going to be our covering. He is going to be our shield. Even when it seems like we've fallen out of favor, even when it seems like, you know, there's no hope for us, right? And, and we just wish we could go back to the way things were, right? But God is saying, no, 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 I have something greater. I have something better and he's going to be a redeemer for us and our families. Amen. All right. Let's look at the second verse. Lamentations chapter three, verse 11. He turned aside my steps and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. And this is uh, speaking of, you know, the, the children of Israel as it relates to relating to the world, right? They had not humbled themselves before God. They had turned to the ways of the world. They had turned towards, you know, the Pharaoh in essence. And well, slightly they did because they were looking for Egypt to come and rescue them when Babylon was coming in um, and taking them um, under under siege. And so, you know, they their whole lives were turned upside down right their their whole lives were were it felt like that there was no hope for them right it says he turned aside my steps and tore me to pieces he has made me desolate and so this is not actually the same as the previous verse right this is speaking of those who have not humbled themselves those who have not sought god in their distress Right. Instead of in their distress, going after God, going after the truth, going after what his word is saying, what his rhema is saying, what the, the true prophets are saying. 
instead of going after those things, they're going after things that tickle their ears, things that make them feel better. Oh, things are going to return back to normal. Oh, things are 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 going to get better. Um, you know, they want to hear those types of things. And so they were listening to that instead of preparing for the invasion, right? Preparing for the, the truth of God coming forth, right? They were still trying to be seen in Pharaoh's eyes as, as being, you know, good and not idle and, and still wanting to have their old ways, right? And so, um, and I, I say Pharaoh, but I'm just saying um, in the eyes of, of other people, in the eyes of the world, right? In their connections with the world, they wanted things to return back to normal, right? And so, um, but they, they weren't, they weren't going to. Why? Because things had changed and God was trying to show them that, but they were refusing that type of a word. And so this is what happens to those people who refuse the humbling, who refuse to come under subjection of of, of God's will, right? They they refuse his ways. And so they they part from God and then not even realize they're off on another path, right? And so God wants them back. Right. He wants them back. He desires that remnant to come forth from this process of burning. He he wants he wants the the good to rise. Right. But but sometimes in order for that to happen, he has to cut off some things. It says he turned aside my steps and tore me to pieces. So he's he's making analogy of of being attacked by a bear or a lion, right? And and so, you know, he's being hunted. Right. But remember, when you're in tribulation, the refinement is is as silver. So it's harsh. Right. It's not going to be a light refinement. It's going to be as unto death. Right. Why? Because you refuse this free gift of Christ and, and you refuse this this love that he has given his life in his refinement of silver as silver. And, and instead, you've chosen it for yourself. Right. In your choices. And so it says he turned aside my steps and tore me to pieces. He has made me desolate. So, so any, in, in a sense, he's emptied them out. Everything that they thought they were filled with, everything that they thought they were happy with, all of their stability has now been ripped away. Right. And so, and so God does these things in order to get us to turn back to him. Right. When we're in a sense, um, not humble, when we're, we're, we're not trusting in him, we're not believing in him, we're not putting our hope in him. He does these types of things to get us to look back at him. All right, let's look at this uh, third verse, Luke chapter 17, verse 12. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. So these 10 lepers represent, you know, the fact that when we are in a desperate situation, we have to have hope. We have to have expectation, right? That's what differentiates us from the rest of the world. The rest of the world is putting their hope and their trust in systems and government and, and, and these types of things. But we put our hope and our trust in God. Right. We put our hope and our trust that the deliverer is coming, that the miracle worker can work a miracle. Right. And and when we receive that miracle, we don't need to just sit back. Right. And say, yeah, we knew God was going to come through. No, we give God the glory. We give him the praise. We give him the honor because he has done this great thing. And so it says, and as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. And so, you know, these people had hope, right? They had hope in God. They believed that God would do it and he did it, right? They believed that, um, you know, uh, that Christ was coming to their village. And so hope was coming to their village. They had expectation, right? And so as they, um, they, they are expecting, 
um, Christ comes and, and he sends a great and mighty miracle of deliverance to these people and they're healed as they go. But when we are healed as we go, we need to make sure that we turn back and give God the glory, right? We need to recognize him, venerate him for his holiness, for his goodness. We don't want to be placed in a position of having to be cut off right? Because you refuse to humble yourself or you refuse to be um, humbled. You refuse to, to turn back and give thanks to God for what he has done, right? God is sending a great deliverance in the midst of a great struggle. And we have to be ready, right? We have to receive that thing. We have to believe, amen? And we have to have expectation and hope. Even in the midst of very dire circumstances, very harsh, pharaoh-like spirits, right? Who are trying to oppress you or make you feel as if you're not going to make it, right? Taking away all the stability that you thought you had and, and, and making you feel in an uncomfortable situation, right? That uncomfortability now is a good thing. That uncomfortability now should bring an expectation of hope of the redemption, right? Because Christ is soon to come. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for the love that you have shown us in giving us your son and giving us hope for a future. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.